Ambulance services are patient breathing. He's not breathing! Has the baby fully come out yet? He's been crushed through the dying. Every year in Britain, 12 million people dial 999 for an emergency ambulance. More than 3,000 a day in the West Midlands. Right, stop screaming and listen to me. Listen, don't be afraid to push too hard. One and two and three. One and two. CPR in progress. Everyone clear? Each call tells the story of a person in desperate need. You were right to a red place who's been badly beaten. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Doc? And with call numbers doubling in the last decade. The head's here, the head's here, the head's here, the head's here, nearly. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, you can. For our public services, a situation that is now critical. Did I find somewhere for him? I can't just say there's no bits. Is this literally what you've got, what you're standing up in? Got nothing else? OK. The failure of the system. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. Cameras follow cases as they unfold, minute by minute. Two ambulances, please, if possible. Okay, yeah, as long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to use me because I can. In the control room, confirmed life extinct. Oh, man. And on the ground. Sorry for your loss. As the West Midlands Ambulance Service race to save lives. They are coming to you, blue lights and sirens, as fast as they possibly can. If you're breathing, can you see the helicopter? You're no trouble, honestly. Everybody needs help sometimes, don't they? This is the story behind the silence. Get out of the way. Ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? Yes, yeah, she's breathing. Look, well, she's pulling up black fluid out of her mouth. What, is the black fluid coming out of her mouth? Yeah, and I'm trying to talk to her, and she's like, she's not there. So she's not conscious, then? Well, you just get me now, but listen. It's very important. I'm not listening to you. Listen. Well, can you get me? Ambulance. Okay, well, this, this isn't going to help if you carry on talking. Look, you've got to be wise. Daily, you need to get someone. You just tell me the ambulance, please. Please, please. Ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? One hour into the Friday late shift, and the control room is taking its first cardiac arrest call of the night. Do you want any help? Put yourself vertically above her and make sure your hands are in the centre of her chest. I'm ready, I'm ready. Keep your arms nice and straight, press down at least five or six centimetres, okay? Don't be afraid to push too hard. Do it at rates of one and two and three. One and two and three. One and two and three. Faster. One and two and three. Get back to me. Don't like that until we get there, okay? One and two and three. You need to harder, okay? Can you still hear me? Hello? Hello, the call has ended abruptly. An ambulance is two minutes away, but until they arrive, the control room must continue giving medical assistance over the phone. It's engaged. It's engaged. Has it come back through to us? No, not yet. Listen, try and stay calm for me. The help's already arranged on the first call. Oh, she's dead. She's dead. Right, listen, we need to try and help her before they arrive. Right, which one? You didn't help. You didn't help. You didn't help. Just go straight to CPR. Listen, listen to me. Is she on the floor? I'm getting Is she on the floor? Yes, the floor. Right. So go to her now. Can you take the phone? Woman, woman, you stupid woman. Right. So what I want you to do is kneel right next to her. I'm already doing it. I'm already doing it. Right, you're not. Like, you're just talking to me. So go to her. One, two, and three. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. We're in it. I'll clear. First thing was, we were giving him CPR advice, but he just wasn't having any of it. You can completely understand in that situation because it's his wife. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Reach say safe 2393. Porky, can you put a call out on the say safe 2393? The crew got out to a patient that's fitting. They've got there within 30 seconds of pressing emergency Richard button. Watson. Controller Richard is dispatching ambulances in Birmingham tonight. As an outsider, if you walked into that room, the emotion in there, you can feel it. Because you check back on the case and the crew confirm when they get there, the patient is, is deceased. You do think about it, but you've got to stay detached. It is tough because some of them do get to you. And it's hard to just erase that emotion. Is he still breathing? What cat problems are going on? Right, you've got that, that shooting, but the patient's deceased. Uh, they're just looking after the wife. 4055 are covered in feces. They're going back to get changed. Friday night in Birmingham South means busy. A lot of trauma, possibly stabbings, got strokes, people that have been unconscious. So there's a good mixture so far with a couple of RTCs. The weather's not so good out there, so there's been a couple of crashes today. 
Birmingham and the Black Country covers 100 square miles with a population of 2.2 million. Tonight, there are 113 ambulances, five rapid response vehicles, and a specialist trauma team all on duty. Ambulance service, the patient breathing. Well, he's just started to talk to me, and he's lost his pair of his face, really. He's talking double degree. What's the address of the emergency? The ambulance service, do you need an ambulance? No, black eyes, no more vision, no one blurred. Just stay where you are so that we can find you when we get there. Where are we taking the arms and towers? Disney World. No, it won't be Disney World. In Cradley Heath, an elderly patient has alerted his emergency care service, who are calling 999 on his behalf. Hey, we've got an 89-year-old gentleman who's, uh, who's stuck on the toilet. He's, his legs have gone, he's, he's not able to sort of wait there. We'll be there for him as soon as we can, then. Ambulance crew Natalie and Nat have just arrived on scene. Hello? Not one to the hospital. Uh, I just want to get up here. But just find out what's happened. Have you just gone to the toilet and you can't get up? I'll get me up here, will you? John? John, honey, I need to know what's happened. Oh, can you get me up here? It's hurting me. OK. John, you haven't fallen, have you? No, I no. Not so you've just gone to the toilet and you can't get up? I'm not going no, back John, to listen, you. John, we're not going to take you to hospital, OK? Please, get me up. Can you push up off your, off your chair? You push up off this chair. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Keep going. Keep, Keep going. going straight. I've got you, John. Hold my hand. That's it. I'll get ready with chair. Okay. Which chair are you going to, John? Your blue one. Is this how you normally walk, John? I can't do it, Is this how you normally walk? Yeah. Oh, John. Thank you for coming. You're it's welcome. Okay. See, I'm, I'm deaf and all. Don't worry. I've got wax in my ears. How's that? Yeah. You're going to have a How are you feeling now, John? Hey. How are you feeling now? All right now. All right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a cup of tea. You want me to make you a cup of tea? Hey. <laughs> OK. While, whilst we put the kettle on, can I just check your blood pressure? OK. OK. So you live here on your own? Yeah. Any family? No, I lost my wife. I've had uh, what's that sugar thing? Diabetes. Sugar diabetes. Did she? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And you've lived on your own ever About since. About forty years ago, that was. Forty. Yeah. You've been on your own for forty years. Yeah. How old was she? I think when she died, she was about forty-six or oh. about fifty. Oh. Your blood pressure's all right, John. Uh. We fixed you. What's that then? Can you give me some, uh, what do you call it, spaghetti? Now? Oh, it's in a cupboard around the corner. Around the corner. Yeah. It's in the cupboard. That's a nice cupboard to you. Nice bit of supper and a cup of tea. Yeah. That's all right. How's that? Check it's not too hot. Oh, you took a lot in there. <laughs> John has been prescribed blood thinning tablets after a recent stay in hospital. Natalie and Nat are struggling to find his medication. We're worried you've got no tablets. Y you've got no tablets, John. There's some somewhere. No, they've all gone. Is there some other so, side over there? No. There's an empty box. Hey. There's an empty box. Uh -huh. Nobody's been and got you any more warfarin. Oh, so that's, let me doctor know tomorrow. It's Saturday tomorrow. It's closed. Oh. So that, that worries me. Yeah. But there's risks to you not having your medication. Yeah. Well, call again tomorrow. Where from? I don't know. I'm going to phone 111 to see if they can do emergency um, prescription. Oh, prescription. please, Lord, let me okay. take yeah, I'm um, a paramedic with West Midlands Ambulance Service. John was discharged out of hospital on warfarin. He had his last one on Wednesday. At the moment, he's got no warfarin whatsoever. Our concern is that, obviously, by the time he gets in touch with somebody on Monday, um, is it going to be Tuesday or Wednesday? And, you know, that's a week then without warfarin. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. They're going to see if they can sort, my, sort your prescription out. Nat must now join the Friday night queue for a callback from an out-of-hours doctor. You think it's something, I? 
Over the past hour, there have been 126 emergency calls to the control room. There is currently just one ambulance available across Birmingham and the Black Country. Darren and Mel are the closest available ambulance to the stabbing. Okay, Darren, 28 year old male, stabbing, bleeding wounds, um, no show, five stab wounds, two in back of head, two in back and one in groin, five stab wounds, straight over at the roundabout, dude. Darren and Mel are seven minutes away from the stabbing. The control room has also dispatched the Merit car, a specialist trauma unit with two doctors and a critical care paramedic on board. A paramedic officer is also on his way to coordinate the scene. Is the blood spraying or spurting over anyway? No, he's not spraying and he's not spurting. Okay, have you got the wounds covered by anything at the moment? Yeah, well, uh, his girlfriend at the moment has just got tea towels on them. Right, we're covering as quick as we can. Okay. Okay, good, yeah. 4449 four, on Channel 8, yeah. If it's a Friday or Saturday night and everyone's been out on the pub, a lot of people have a red mist, don't they? And if you ask someone what, what's happened during a fight, they won't remember. I think the stabbings are getting a lot worse. A lot worse. Hiya. Hello, what's his name? Tommy. Okay, I'm gonna have a good look at him. Do you keep the pressure on his head? Right, hang on this one, mate. Don, how are you feeling, mate? It's really tired. Yeah? What's your vision like? Can't see. You can't see? What I want you to do, mate, is keep talking to us, okay? This needs to come round him. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right, 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 right. I heard screaming. Okay. It was her screaming my name. So I've come to the door yeah. and he's just there because he's in the blood. Is he normally fitting well? Yeah. No medical problem? No. Dom, can you talk to us? Yeah. Good man. Dom, do you know if you've been stabbed on your legs at all? No, no. You don't think so? Oh, we're trying to help you. The Merrick car and the paramedic officer are now on scene. He's really he's trying not to reason. He's been stabbed. He's got stab wounds twice to his head here. He's also been stabbed middle back and at the bottom to the right hand side, sort of renal area. We're going to just try and get you to the ambulance. All right. Yeah, let's get you in the ambulance. Just check it on the back of the ambulance. Let's get you out of Come on, mate. Come on. One, two, three. Stand up for us. Okay. I used to be in the RAF uh, when I was about 20. We always had the golden hour. Stem the bleeding if you can, get some fluids into them and just get them gone. Being out in Afghanistan, you were in a high-pressured environment. You never knew what you were going to. You never knew what you're going to step on, where you're going to tread. I guess when you come to a job like this, you've got to thrive off that kind of situation. If you, if you can't, then obviously you're not in the right job. No, no. Once the patient is in the ambulance, the team must check he has no further injuries. Dom, I'm going to be cutting your trousers off now, mate, all right? So he has two stab wounds, okay. middle of his back and down here to the right-hand side by his kidney region. I put this on to try and put pressure. It's not working. It's not great, but it's stopping the bleeding. Oh, I feel so hard, oh. So, you happy to go? No. Dom, they're just having to pack your wounds. I'm giving you some pain relief now, mate. So some of them are quite deep. They start bleeding, which is good. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Dom? Yeah. No? All right, mate. At least you got your fancy pants on for it. I know. Nice. It's not Thursday, though, mate. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not Thursday. It's not Thursday. Well, that's good to hear. And what's this scar from here, mate? Oh. Is that previous wound? Yeah. yeah. This is the The patient, Dom, has been brought to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. He's the fourth stab victim the ambulance service has treated tonight. Sorry about your shirt. Eleven miles west in Cradley Heath, Natalie and Nat have been waiting to hear from the on-call doctor for more than 30 minutes. Yeah. Hello? Yes, hello, it's Natalie, yeah, hi, yeah, hello. So I'm just a bit concerned, really, because this gentleman has got no warfarin. There's nobody that can go and get any for him. He hasn't had any for two days. Um, so I just wondered, could, the, um, could there be an emergency prescription done and possibly delivered to this gentleman? OK. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
John, I've just spoken to the doctor. They're going to come within the next six hours yeah. to get your prescription. Yeah, yeah. They're going to let themselves in with the key code. Um, They're going to let themselves in. Uh, no, no, the key code. Yeah, I've told them. Okay? Okay. So don't be alarmed if somebody comes walking no. in. Okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for looking after me. You're welcome. You're welcome. <sighs> okay. Bye, John. Bye bye, John. Say the light in. Say the fire's on. It's on. The fire's on, John. Okay. No night. Long way out of hospital. Yeah. Long way out of hospital is strong road, yes. Yeah. No night, John. Hey, Okay. Bless him. Time for John, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's horrible, they've got no family. Who else has that gentleman got but us? I like people like John. I like John. Ambulance service, how can I help? Some man, um, it says road traffic collision, vehicle upside down. Ah, oh, see. Yeah, mail trapped in the vehicle. But well, what's the location? <laughs> Old Warwick Road in Hockley Heath. Hole. Could that come under Alton as well? Uh, possibly. Yeah. Hi, three zero. Hi, three zero. Can I start you on a job in Soley Hall, please? Uh, RTC. One male trapped and bleeding heavily. A car is reported to have overturned in Soley Hall, nine miles east of Birmingham city centre. The control room immediately dispatch a paramedic officer and the specialist trauma team. Darren and Mel. Have just become available. Uh, there's been trapped guys. Um, there's one male bleeding from the male. The vehicle's on the roof and the male's trapped from five bleeding heavily. Receive it up. Oh my god. Yeah, all received, thank you. Alton. I hope I don't know him. All my friends live around there. Paramedic officer James is sent to major trauma incidents to manage the multiple crews on scene. He's just behind Darren and Mel. Darren and Mel have arrived at the reported address, but there's no sign of the overturned car. Old Warwick Road. This is, we're on the Warwick Road. Now. Is it your phone? Um, Warwick Road. We can't locate this at the moment. We can just see the fire and police turning up, so we will turn around and try and follow them over. Triple four nine. That's all received by control. Uh, Echo November five five. Received it. Yeah, five five. That's all received. Uh, we probably need to uh, ask for a better location in regards to uh, where we are for this call. Uh, no sign of present. Yeah, we're on convoy now between fire, ASO and police, so hopefully we'll be able to locate the same. Triple four nine, that's all received. Uh, thank you. Just keep us updated on the location, uh, even when found. Uh, receive it. Because the patient is reported to be trapped in his vehicle, the fire service has been called, but they're also struggling to locate the incident. Morning. How are you? RTC persons reported. Yeah, trapped. Roof. Yeah. Old Warwick Road, old. I'm just going to get to replot it to make sure we're right. Yeah, well, this, this is Old Warwick Road. Yeah, yeah. The only other thing is you've got Old Warwick Road, which carries on on the other side as well. It's only a small little cold, is that there, yeah, isn't it? Is. Right, let's pull up so that they can... Is it in there? Echo November 5-5, five, five, Whiskey Romeo. Whiskey Romeo, 5-5, five, five. go ahead of that. Thanks, um, Warwick Road, Old Warwick Road have all been checked. There's no sign. We're currently standing by uh, as per Old Warwick Road with fire and mock crew. We well, yeah, have call back if you can get some further info or confirm the location. Five five. Yes, of course. The initial call has come to us via police. I do have a call of telephone number. Need it with me, Anna. Right. You've come from Solly, haven't you? We're just trying to verify the call as well, because obviously we got Old Warwick Road, Alton, and there's Old Warwick Road, Lapworth as well. We we'll verify the call first, anyway. Then, it's come from police to us. Yeah. Should we flip round? Yeah, get out of the end. Hello. Hello, it's the ambulance service here. Yeah. Did you contact police regarding uh, a traffic accident on the Old Warwick Road in Alton? Yes, we did, yeah. Okay, and our crews are uh, with police and fire on the scene and there's no sign of anything at all. Are you still there? There's no sign of anything. If you go towards, if you go towards Hockey Heat, uh, the McLaren and Rolls Royce garage. McLaren and Rolls Royce garage. garage. And it's between Hockey Heat and Lapworth. Five, five, it's a road between Lapworth and Hockey Heat. Uh, Near the McLaren garage. Yeah, right at that turn. Um, that's a little bit of a run from here, but uh, you may find a nearer crew. We'll get it replotted and then uh, just have a look see if there's anybody closer. Do you know where you're going? 
It's 13 minutes since Darren and Mel were dispatched to this job, and they're still eight miles away. Besides the three vehicles currently assigned, the control room has now dispatched a volunteer doctor in a car. But controller Richard has spotted an ambulance that is closer to the incident. Sorry to bother you, um, I think you might come across an RTC now on the old Warwick Road. Yeah, we'll spin around, mate. I literally think you're going to drive through Hockley Heath and see it. Um, there's vehicles on the way. I believe car to be overturned, uh, male trapped inside, bleeding heavily. Yeah, sure, we'll keep going, mate. I'll see we come across. We're losing minutes now. If he's losing blood and he's trapped in a vehicle, we need to get there ASAP. Hang on, careful, careful, careful. How good is that? Look at that! Go on, Darren, tank it. You do get a bit stressed with it, because you're thinking, oh God, where are they? They could be potentially dying, or someone could be lying in a ditch, and you can't find them. Everything's just running through your head by the time you get there, because you, you don't know what that scene's going to be like. November 5-5 five, five, uh, in attendance. So. 25 minutes after the 999 call came in, James arrives at the incident. So it's single occupant, guys, we believe? Yeah, just single occupant. Okay. Is he talking to us? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, mate, you all right? Yeah, good man, mate. Normally fitting well? Sorry? Normally fitting well? Yeah. Good man, just keep your head nice and still for us? Yeah, no worries. Probably. Open the door, and just get the stretcher in, and then pop him out, yeah? Happy with that? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. All right, yeah. 30 seconds later, Darren and Mel arrive. They're the fourth vehicle on scene. Hey, all right, Carl. Oh, yeah. No, it's not on its roof. Can um, one of you guys put a helmet on and take over from the police officer? Please, thank you. Thank you. Uh... As soon as he's out, we'll just help him out to the stretcher. Let's go up to where the light is, and then we can sort him out from there. Right. Keep your head still. Ooh. We need feet first, thank you very much. I think that needs to have a bit more of an angle, mate. Do you want to keep them still as we can? Yep, yeah, no problem. Right. Yeah. On ready, steady, move, okay? Ready, steady, move. Let's get him over. Okay? Yeah. We're in the right position? Yeah. Yep. Okay? On your side, Carl, and we'll lower him down. Go down on move. Ready, steady, move. There you go. Good work, mate. Thanks, just some notes for the log that the patient's now extricated from the vehicle. Still remains stable. How much have you had to drink, my darling? Uh, Bit. You've had quite a bit to drink, okay. Yeah. Um, What's the last thing you remember? Don't know, actually. You don't know. Do you know who we are? Ambulance. Um, yep. Yeah. So you've had a bit of a crash in your car, we think. The emergency doctor on scene must check the patient for injuries that require immediate attention before the crew can make their way to hospital. Let's... Andrew, thank you. He finds nothing of concern. Are you happy? Yeah. Don't move your head. Keep it nice and still. So have you ever been in an ambulance before? Uh, I have actually once. What was that for? Um, I've Little bit ironic, really, at the to at the moment. Yeah, um, but still, I'm going to take my dad's car out. So it would be a good idea to take your dad's car out? Yeah. Did you crash it? Yeah, it broke it off. Did you lose your licence? Yeah. How long for? Eight Have you, how long have you had your licence back for? Uh, Didn't learn from that experience. So when you crashed your dad's car before drink driving, I bet your dad was fuming. We're here now. The 24-year-old patient will be scanned to check for broken bones and internal injuries. TC that the crew went on the rollover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, he was drink driving. Was he? Yeah. The roof was absolutely caved in. Um, in the crew's words, the only injury he had was his pride was dented. Yeah, and his car was dented, not just his pride. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he could have killed himself or yeah, somebody yeah. else. I don't know what planet they're living on, really. At Heartland's hospital, the drunk driver has refused medical treatment and 24 minutes after arriving, he's been spotted leaving the building with his father. Um, his dad's just walked in, and they've removed him. Where have they gone? They must have gone down this way. Um, we've advised him he needs to stay. Can you see him? We have said that you might arrest him. They're there. 
Peace, sir. Here. Is your breath test button there? Uh, no. No? If you walk in out of you're fine to do a breath test. Okay, then. Have you done? I'll arrest you. Give me a second. No, you're under arrest. Don't wait. Alright. Thank you for that. No problem. He stays in hospital, we can get checked. Yeah, I guess we're just resolving as well. Sure. I was always the kid that no one thought I was going to amount to anything or do something with my life. I just got up one morning and decided to join the RAF. I think it'd be good for loads of people to go and join the military and just get a bit of experience or getting a bit of authority in their life. Because it kicked me up the ass. It's Wednesday morning, and Team 3 is back in for the day shift. Good morning! Is it a first baby? Second baby? You think she's taken an overdose? Yeah, good luck. She's left me alone. Good luck, good luck. The package of pills. OK. She's got the sirens on full back. All right, listen out for the sirens. Can you hear them? At this time of the morning, we do get a lot of falls. You got a lot of carers going into addresses early hours, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. You, you can normally get a pattern on calls. How many ambulances have you got? Currently, we've got... 20. Is that a good number? It's a good number for the moment. Whether that's a good number later on today, I'm not sure. We'll soon find out when uh, everybody starts calling Trouble Nine. Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Yes, yeah, yeah. What's the reason for the call? We're looking at our patient, talking to the dog, and my wife thinks she's um, broken her ankle, she's pregnant as well. A young family in distress is the first call of the day for Darren and his partner today, John. 26 weeks preggers. Husband is with patient now. So from there then, where would we go to find you? Look, if you've got the drawbridge pub on your left, I turn right and there's a canal path down there. You're on the canal path? Yes. Which way do you want to go? I'll ask control. They must know which way they are, because there's no point in walking the whole way down that way. Should we go that way? Maybe we can borrow the barge. Can you yeah. take this up, please? Hi, right, Alison. That's what's going on, then. All right. Is it all around here? Yeah, yeah it's a bit swollen there, isn't it? Can you move your foot? You can move your toes. That's a good thing. Your arms are looking good. We'll get you to, to pop your coat back on as well and just try and keep you warm. So I think stress is going to be the best bet. You're going to get a stretch here, mate. Alison may have fractured her ankle. And with the ambulance quarter of a mile up the towpath, the crew faced the challenge of transporting her. Well, here we are. We've got this. It's going to be very bumpy. I've offered that we could use the barge cover. Chair onto there. Yeah. And then lift on. Yeah. Right, we'll guide you towards the edge. Yeah, I was going to say, we yeah. were warned down where the air. Where the puddles are. One, two, three. three. There we are. Smash it. Danny, still all right? Yeah, we're on, we're on. Right, wheels are on. <laughs> There we are. There we are. That's, that's the hard bit, Dave. See you later, John. See ya. John will take the ambulance and meet Darren at a road bridge further up the canal. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> bacon sandwich. <laughs> I've had a bacon sandwich here, haven't <laughs> I've had a great morning. <laughs> Alison can now be transported to hospital for x-rays. Nine miles east of the canal in Bartley Green, a new 999 call is in progress. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Yes, yeah. Is the patient conscious? Well, half at the bottom of the stairs, yeah. He's an alcoholic. OK, what's the reason for the call? He was rushing to hospital about four days ago. He was suspected heart attack. He signed himself out. Now he's on at the bottom of the stairs. He's not, he hasn't eaten for um, four weeks. So what have he had for the last four weeks? Alcohol. Five well, one, thank you. Confirm an update for case, please. Got a 40 year old male, alcoholic, intoxicated, has had a fall. He's got a chest injury, shoulder injury, elbow and rib injury. Thank you. We'll give you um, an early update. So we'll see. Thank you. Stand by. It's lovely. Is he? Yeah. Paramedics Maya and Lawrence are the closest crew to the job. It's category four, so it's not deemed as life threatening. No, trauma. Category four jobs are the lowest priority, and the ambulance service has a target of 90 minutes to respond. 
but because there are currently crews to spare in Birmingham South, this patient gets immediate attention. Morning, you all right? You're his partner? What's actually happened today? I've got to dropping the kids to school this morning. I found him at the bottom of the stairs with a vacuuming knocked off the stairs into the hallway. Yeah. But he's been up most of the night falling over. Yeah. I've taken it in a lot. Yeah? How many cans have you had, say, today? Well, uh, about six. It's about six? All night. OK. And would you normally have six a day? Because some people, six, isn't, it's not a lot for them. So is that...? About 20. Oh, so, so that's less for you. That's, well, there's a good chance that's why you're 15. Yeah, if you're normally, it's about 20. Do you drink from the second you wake up every morning? Yeah? yeah. Right up until you go to bed? Yeah. Off I have the other day. Fell over the other day. So is there any pain anywhere at the minute, Mark? It's just my rib that hurts it. Your ribs that hurt it. Yeah. Mark, can you sit up for me? Can I have a little feel of your neck and your back and then we'll take it from there? Can you let me know if there's any pain? Any pain? No. Any pain? No. Any, any problems with ulcers, as far as you know? No, the only thing is, I hurt my rib. Yeah, we can get that looked at. What kind of fix does he have? They're called absents. Oh, OK. Yeah, so he goes to speech and can't move his legs. Yeah, and it becomes quite it. vacant. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how many he's been having a day? About three or four. About three or yeah. four. That's why I found the ambulance at last time because it was pretty much. And so it's three or four a day yeah. at the minute. Yeah. Right, I'm all right. So far, your physical observations are okay, but that's not what we're, we're concerned about, yeah, really. What are you concerned about? We're concerned about your drinking, I'm Mark. And we're concerned about the fact that you're having fits uh, every day. Because yeah, yeah. it only takes one fit to go on for a bit too long, and, and that's it then. You've had it. So, what I'd probably recommend is if you come up to the hospital with us. I'm not grabbing with anybody. But you don't look well. I, I'm not. You right. don't? You're covered in bruises and scratches. You're going to end up hurting yourself. What's going to happen if you have a fit for too long and you stop breathing? How are we going to overcome this together? I'm not going to hospital. Uh, I'm not going. Let them give you a quick MOT, a full I'm MOT. I'm not going. OK. Maya and Lawrence have been on scene with Mark for 20 minutes. In that time, a further 82 999 calls have been made. Ambulance services, patient breathing. I'm not sure. I don't think she is. I came in to check on my sister this morning and she's feeling cold and not waking up. Is the patient breathing? I'm breathing, but difficult, Rob. OK, is that the reason for your call? Is it the breathing? And my kidneys are hurting so much. Have you brought up any blood? No, but I've been sick. You've been sick? Very ill, love. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? I can't hardly breathe. You're the patient. Do you suffer with any breathing conditions? Asthma. I've got asthma. Asthma. In Kings Norton, a 54-year-old man is having breathing difficulties. You ever been diagnosed with a heart attack before? Yeah, that one a month ago. Yeah, a month ago you had one? Yeah. OK. Ambulance crew Bex and Donna have been dispatched. OK, getting out of four. Getting out of four. And how long have you felt like that for? Three days. Two days? You don't mean I know. Don't talk for a minute, Billy, if I'm just listening to you, Jeff. OK. So you felt short of breath for two days. Do you normally have difficulty breathing? No. No. Do you have problems with your lungs at all? No. What do you suffer with normally? Asthma. Asthma. So you I'm do have a problem with your lungs? I'm diabetic too. OK. Have you used your inhaler today? Yeah, and it ain't work. OK. So does it hurt to breathe? Yeah. Where does it hurt? Well, In your chest. So you've got chest pain. Nice and still. That looks fine. OK. Everything we've checked is OK at the moment, but obviously something's causing you this discomfort in your chest. So we'll pop you up to A&E. And did you last go into hospital? Yeah, what was that for? You took an overdose. You took an overdose of what? Yeah, and when was the last time before that? It's only on Monday. You've been in twice? Yeah, well, Both for overdoses? Yeah. OK. Have you taken an overdose today? No, I feel like it. OK. Go steady. You're going to that person at their lowest point. And often people phone with one thing, but actually they want help with something else. Sometimes I have to do a bit of digging to find out exactly what they need help with. You put your medication in that bag, didn't you? Yeah? What's the main problem now? I'm not out of four. Can't get me away. I'm at the Are you worried? Yeah. Yeah, what are you worried about? <laughs> You're worried about having another heart attack. All right. Everything we checked was OK. All right? OK? And if you're having another heart attack, we're going to look after you. OK? So don't worry. Because worrying is going to make it worse, isn't it? Yeah? I need you to stay nice and calm and relaxed for me, OK? Yeah? I've done funny heart, don't we? No. 
We'll look after you, I promise. Okay. Okay? So you've definitely not taken an overdose this morning. And you took one on Saturday and one on Sunday? No, it's on, in, 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 Sunday and Monday. Monday. So what did you take on Sunday? Actually, what did they do with you in the hospital? Yeah. Nothing. Did you go to hospital? Yeah. You did? And then on Monday you took an overdose of That's, antibiotics? Yeah. What made you take the overdoses? Why? Well, I'm family. I, mean, I don't see that way. You don't see your family? Where are they? You don't know how they Why not? I don't know. You don't know? So when did you last speak to your family? Six months ago. Six months ago? Did something happen six months ago? I'm not really. What for? For assault. Oh. What did you do? Your wife? Yeah. You hit your wife? Yeah. Is she all right? Yeah. Yeah. I need to Okay. So you got arrested for assault? Yeah. And now none of your family will speak to you? Mm. No? Have you got children? Not really girl. And do you not see any of them? Because of this assault? Yeah. On their mum? Was that their mum? Right. Have you ever taken an overdose before the two you took this weekend? Yeah, no. You have? Yeah. How many times? Sixteen times. Pardon? Sixteen times. Yeah. Over what period? What time period? And you've not had any help with those? Is it to take an overdose to end your life or to get some help? This is Philip's ninth call to the ambulance service in the past month. Next time. In Bartley Green, Mayor and Lawrence's patient, Mark, is more reluctant to go to hospital. Ambulance crews aim to be on the move after 20 minutes, but they've now been on scene for 60. Are you going to just come with us, please? Yes, I can. We do need to take you up to hospital I'm not to well. see someone. Please, Dad, just go get checked over. Uh, I'm not I think if your partner would rather. Yeah, you've got you to get the kids as well, 46 yeah. year old. Oh, yeah, so your kids need you, don't yeah. They don't want to see you like this. I'm, I'm sure 16 you... and 17 and a 19. Oh, has so he got five kids? Five like... girls. Five yeah. girls. <laughs> well, I've got many kids in my family, so. And you still can't walk or stand. It's not filming the kids. No, it's not, Mark. Like... Addiction in general, I think it makes people incredibly selfish. I think people in the grip of addiction aren't able to realise the effect it has on the rest of their family. My birth mother had issues with um, drugs, so I've been um, on the receiving end of that. Careful, Mark. Mark. Wait, Mark. <coughs> no, Mark. Mark. No. No. No alcohol, Mark. Mark. No. Mark. My alcohol. I oh, know, but Mark, you can't drink. Okay. Mark, get a can. You can't. Dad, you can't have a can. I grew up thinking it was normal to be called a slut and a slag, and to be told that was hated. That was normal. We lived in numerous hostels. We lived in safe houses. I've lost count of how many schools that we went to. Growing up around addiction, I quite often felt like there was no hope. It is so close to home. It's like walking into my childhood quite often. And it's really difficult, really difficult to deal with. Mark, Sarah doesn't want you here, so you can't stay here anyway, so you're going to have to leave. So why don't you just come with us before... Oh, I want you to go to the hospital and go and get checked out. Do you know why, Do you want to get the police oh, right yeah, there? Good. Thank you very much. Um, could we get police running to us on this job, please? Um, the patient lacks capacity um, and is refusing to be conveyed to hospital, um, so we need their assistance, please. Is it? Mm -hmm. Zero zero one, thank you. So we've got a case in Bartley Green. We've got a 40 year old male that lacks capacity. The ambulance service has a specialist mental health car, which is 10 minutes from Mark's location. It has medical staff and a police officer on board who Richard hopes might persuade Mark to go to hospital. We're just about to send our case down Lock Road in 
Well, we'll receive. Thank you very much. So the triage team there, they can't assist at the current time. They are now going on a separate case for the police. So they can't assist at the, the moment. Uh, so currently we're at a stalemate. With the clock ticking, Richard decides to call the police direct for assistance. Uh, he's an alcoholic, he's had a fall, he had a chest injury, so we need to take him to hospital. He's got no capacity, no nose, but obviously we can't get him out really, but he needs to go. If you have no capacity, can't you just take him anywhere? No, no, because we can't, we can't force him out, you see, we haven't got the power. I don't know whether we have, actually. We can't make him go, we can only advise him to go. We're not going to do it, because we can't force him out as well. All right, thanks a lot, bye-bye. They're happy to assist, but at the current time they're dealing with a case that they've just got to scene on, so they're going to be some, some time. Well, just spoke to the police directly, and they're saying that they can't force anybody out of the property they can only ask. If we could get some assistance soon, that would be great. I know it's not your fault. But currently, um, they're not sending it. I know we've been here hours, and I wish I could say that the police are on the way, but they're still not on the way just yet. Unfortunately, there's not um, a quick solution at the minute, but hopefully the police will be coming soon. Hopefully. We do have to rely on other agencies, and it can be difficult because I think we feel as if maybe the police don't want to attend. However, it's, that, it's not that they don't want to, they can't. There's not enough funding, there's not enough staff, but the service demand is increasing more and more. And drive to 5123, Roger, that's all Thank you. If you can return, please, have a... Just need you to keep checking his breathing regularly for me until the ambulance crew arrives, OK? How's it looking on your pet? Uh, very busy. Extremely busy. What no crews. And we've got nine outstanding jobs at the moment. Get in a chair. You take your hand with you. Come on, Mayor and Lawrence have been on scene for over two and a half hours. Mark's partner, Sarah, has called in his mum and sister to try and persuade him to go to hospital. No, Mark, sit on here. I'll be back on here, then. Come on. Please. Mark, come on, son. Don't be so stubborn. Go get checked over. Go get checked over. Come on, please. Give me a chair, then. In the chair. In the chair, then, please. Come on. Come get into the chair. Give me that. I can't back. Come get into the chair. You can have it. Come on, back, please. Look, you're wasting these at people's time. I'm not. You are. You can have, you can. Once you get in you there. Move out my way, man. Right? Mm. Come on, back. Should I go and get kids in a bit? Mm. It's not fair on the kids. That was up all night listening to you falling over. It's not fair on the kids. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where I just wondered, uh, do you have an ETA uh, for the police? Um, we've just been, we're just still waiting. Roger, over. Thanks. We shouldn't be in this position. Three hours later, relatives having to turn up and call the police so we can get some support. I am able to separate the selfish behaviour from the actual person because I do believe addiction is an illness. If someone had cancer, you wouldn't discriminate against them, would you? You wouldn't say, Oh, well, I'm not going to help you because you're, you're a horrible person. You still try. Mark. Mark, please go to hospital. Please. Please, Mark, for your mum. She's in tears there. Come on, son, I can't lose you. I think unless you've been through an experience, I don't think you can ever truly relate to it. So you can read as many books as you want, however, until you've, you've been there and been let down that many times, um, I don't think you'll ever truly understand. The only person who can ever beat the addiction is the person themselves, but they can only beat it when they're ready. Look how much your mum's hurting, Mark. Oh, look at me. Your mum's just told you that she's scared that you're going to die. She's just there. She doesn't want to lose you like she's I'm lost her husband. Not, I'm not Listen I'm to what your mum's saying, Mark. I'm not going to die. You will eventually, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah. you will eventually. eventually. Yeah, it could be next he week. Be sure. oh, don't be so sarcastic, son. You need to go to the hospital. You need to sort yourself out. Oh, my gosh, mate. So. 
Um, four, four, five, one. What she's saying is, um, they've called police. We've called police. They won't go, and they've been sat there nearly three and a half hours waiting yeah, for yeah. police. I'll get Alison to ring the police direct from her side as well. Then. Alison is the team manager, and Rich hopes a call from her to the police can unlock the situation. The police are saying they've got no to attend now, and then they, I think that. Yeah, yeah. Because the crew, the crew, and the the patient's partners found the police themselves as well. Yeah, yeah. Because the one he removed. All right. Within a few minutes, two officers arrive on scene. Thank you. Just wait your seat because the thing is, so, yeah. These folk, they don't feel that leaving you here is an option, OK? So what we need to do is we need to get your shoes on, we need to get on the back of the ammo. The quicker we go up there, the quicker we can get back to them. OK, well, at the moment, mate, that's not an option, OK? No more, Mark. Mark! Don't. Yes, no, it's a bag. You have it when you get back. No, I'm not, darling. I understand that, but at the moment... You had some. Nearly four hours after the ambulance arrived, Mark is finally on his way to hospital. Do you want it to get sober, Mark? You do? I really want you to start thinking. What, what's stopping you? I don't know, man. You don't know? I don't know what to do. But... You know that feeling at the minute that you've got? Oh, nightmare. Nightmare. Probably yeah. is, to be fair. It's a nightmare. Lights are shining all around this world. You'd want them all, but what you want is this girl. So you can stick those rules that just second pass. They'll give you so much, but you'll end up with less. They'll give you I felt very angry towards my mother for a very long time. I don't anymore. Because I'm able to accept there must have been a reason. You see the world now, it's bruised black and blue. People say it, don't they? Hurt people, hurt people. I want is you. If certain people hadn't stopped to help me and gone that extra mile for me, I wouldn't be where I am. So that's why, you know, I think I have to give back. I have to. Bruise, black and blue. Too many words are hard but true. And we'll all wise up like we, we knew we'd do. Bruise, black and blue. Bruise, black and blue. Bruise, black and blue. Next on Ambulance. I've got a baby in my hand. Is he breathing? No, I don't know. You need to put your mouth completely over the baby's nose and nose. Do it now. I am. Yeah. 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 Yeah.